So here's a question. Everybody listen to this. If you're in the house or watching from your own house, lean in here and hear that. When was the last time you spoke these words that I'm about to put on screen? I forgive you. I forgive you. Uh, did you say them today? Was it last week? Was it last year? You're like, I don't remember the last time I forgave somebody. How about this one? Maybe this is uh, even more difficult to answer. When was the last time you said, will you forgive me? You asked the question of somebody. You said, will you forgive me? Now, I'm not, it, don't let you, this is not, well, I said, I'm sorry. That's not what I said. I would have put, I'm sorry on the screen, right? No, I said, I forgive you. Or have you asked the question of somebody in your life, will you forgive me? For most of us, this idea of forgiveness is not easy. On either side of it, it's hard to say I forgive you, uh, to tell somebody that I forgive you for the offense, the way you've done something to me. It's also very difficult for us to receive or ask for forgiveness from another person. I was thinking about that and I was like, why is it so hard to say I forgive you? Why is it so difficult for us to ask for forgiveness? Isn't it because it places us in a vulnerable position? You're exposed when you ask for forgiveness or when you tell somebody I forgive you. Think about it. If you say to somebody, I forgive you, maybe somebody's asked you for it, or maybe you just feel like you need to say it to somebody. When you say it, it kind of feels like you're saying, it's okay what you did. And so it kind of places you in a vulnerable position, or you're like, John, you have no idea what's happened to me. It's been very difficult, and I want to make sure that person knows they can't do that to me again. And so I can't say the words, I forgive you, because if I forgive somebody, they'll come at me again. They'll think it's okay. Now, I'm not here to say that that's okay, that somebody should come at you again or whatever. I'm not here to say that I think we have a misunderstanding that if you forgive somebody, that means you can have no boundaries with them. That's not true. All right? Forgiveness does not always mean you let somebody back in to hurt you. That's not what we're saying. Forgiveness is different than that. And sometimes we, we forget that and we don't understand that. So we want to talk about that on this journey as we walk through this series. But it puts you in a vulnerable place, right? Or if you were to say to somebody or ask the question, will you forgive me? And I would dare say everybody here has offended somebody, has sinned against somebody, and you need to ask forgiveness. More than saying, I'm sorry, you need to say, will you forgive me? And when you do that, it places you in a vulnerable position as well. Why? Because now I've said, will you forgive me? I've given somebody control over that. And when I give it to them, what happens? I'm like, what if they don't forgive me? What if they say no? What if they say, I'm sorry, but I can't forgive you? All these kinds of things are so difficult, right? And it makes you vulnerable. And you're like, I just, we are not a people who like to be vulnerable in our culture. Even in church culture, we don't want to be vulnerable and transparent like that. And so I think because forgiveness is so difficult and it makes us vulnerable, whether we're saying I forgive you or whether we're asking for forgiveness, we just go, I, I can't do it. It's not something I do very often. And so I haven't said I forgive you. I haven't asked somebody for forgiveness for a long time. Those really are big questions to ask as we get started. I think one of the things we learn with forgiveness is there's just no guarantee when it comes to forgiveness. Just because you ask for it doesn't mean you'll receive it from a person, right? Or just because you say, I forgive you to a person doesn't mean everything's going to be okay. They might hurt you again and again and again. And so there's not a guarantee simply because of forgiveness that that stuff's going to go away. But the reality is this, and if you're a Christian, um, you need to hear this. If you're not a Christian, I really think this is helpful. But I especially want to speak to the people who would say, I want to follow Jesus. I want to live in the way of Jesus. I want to do what Jesus does. I want to act like Jesus acts. I want his heart to be my heart on display. I want to do those things. I want to be a Christian. I want to be a follower of Jesus. Then I would say to you that forgiveness must be a discipline in your life. You've got to be willing to say, I forgive you, 
and you've got to be willing to ask for forgiveness. It's got to become a part of a disciplined spiritual life for you. It's part of the rhythm of being a disciple, being a follower. I would say this, we're not really mature in our discipleship, and that's okay unless we've heard that over and over. <laughs> if you've never heard this, okay, so let's work on this, but if you've heard it a lot, we're not mature in our discipleship if we don't get to the place where forgiveness is a part of our existence as a Christian. There's a reason for that, and I want to dig into that today. For Jesus, he would say this to you, I think, and I know that's a bold statement, but he does say this to us through his word, through scripture. Jesus would say that it needs to be a part of our everyday lives. Forgiveness has to be a part of what you do as a Christian. How do I know that? Well, first of all, Jesus taught forgiveness. So if you read the gospels, which I hope you do, if you don't do that, that's a good place to start. If you're a Christian, if you're not a Christian, you want to know about Jesus, read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament. They tell the story of Jesus. What you will find in there, you can't escape it, is that Jesus teaches forgiveness. He forgives people and he teaches about forgiveness. And then the other writers in the New Testament pick up on this, right? And so they write about forgiveness, that's why we're calling this series, Forgive One Another. Basically, scripture says, forgive one another. The biblical story from Old and New Testament is forgive one another, but especially as you read the teachings of Jesus and then those who teach about what Jesus taught, those are the rest of the books in the New Testament, what you're gonna discover is that Jesus taught forgiveness. Over and over he taught it. Let me give you just one spot where he teaches it. That's a pretty profound spot where he teaches it. Jesus was traveling from town to town, place to place, city to city, village to village, person to person. I mean, that's basically all he did. He would go from place to place and he would do all kinds of things and he would teach all kinds of things. He took teachable moments. He didn't waste any moment. He always used it to teach great lessons. One time his disciples noticed, these are the 12, that Jesus kept leaving after he would do something in a town and they'd be like, where'd Jesus go? Well, he would go on a mountain or a hillside or a solitary place, it would say. So he'd get off by himself to do what? Pray. And so he'd need to be re-energized and spend time with his father, the father. Jesus, the son, would spend time with the father and the father would minister to the son and he would ask God for certain things. And so Jesus would come back and then he would do more ministry in a new place. And his disciples one day were like, hey, have you noticed Jesus prays a lot? And they're like, yeah, let's ask him to teach us how to pray. And so they go to Jesus and they're like, hey, Jesus, would you teach us how to pray? John the Baptist, he was the one that came before Jesus, his cousin, and basically pointed to Jesus and said, I'm not the Messiah, he's the Messiah. The lesson we get from John is our lives should always point to Jesus, all right? And so John points to Jesus and says, he's the one, he's the long-awaited Messiah, he's the savior of the world, he is God in the flesh, right? So John had followers or disciples. This was a common thing back then if you were a teacher or a rabbi. And so Jesus had followers and they're like, hey, John taught his people how to pray. Jesus, you're our leader and teacher. Why don't you teach us how to pray? And Jesus is like, I'd love to teach you how to pray. And so Jesus teaches them a prayer. And we call it now, we, we love to um, turn these things into big things and, and they should be. We call it the Lord's Prayer. And we pray it sometimes. Maybe you've prayed it. And the Lord's Prayer is basically Jesus' prayer. And he's telling his followers, not just then but now, the same God then is the same God now. He says, when you pray, you should pray like this. And here's some things to include. It's very interesting what he taught them to include. Here's one of the things, just one of the lines about forgiveness. Matthew 6, 12 and Luke eleven fourteen, 14, both places it's included there. It says, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. So there's the word forgive twice. So Jesus is like, look, if you want to be my follower, then what you're going to do is you're going to ask God for forgiveness. 
right? Forgive us our sins. This is you praying to God. So imagine as you pray, you say, God, forgive me for my sins. But he doesn't stop there. He says, as we forgive those who sin against us. And I think it's interesting that what you get right here, watch this. It took me a while to understand this as I was studying it this week. You get a two-step model for forgiveness. One step, but our foot is in the air already. Two steps. You're like, wow, that's really deep. It is deep, actually. Because when it comes to forgiveness, what Jesus says is you step and you ask God to forgive you. But as soon as you begin to receive that, you then forgive other people. It doesn't say ask God for forgiveness, then forgive those who sin against you. It says what? As we forgive. That's huge. In the original language, that's actually what it says in the Greek. It's, it's a step thing. It's like, it's like as you step, the next step is already in progress. And so they're linked together. That's what I'm trying to say here. You don't just ask God for forgiveness. Well, we do, right? I get this wrong so much of the time. I'm happy to be forgiven by God, but I don't want to forgive you because you've sinned against me. You offended me. You whatever, right? And, but, but what Jesus is saying here is we ask God for forgiveness, and then as we're doing that, we forgive others. Something happens when we really begin to understand God's forgiveness where we will then begin to forgive others. But this is so difficult, right? And probably like me, you don't get this very right. So I was trying to think of a, a visual aid for this today, and I was like, you know, most of us do forgiveness like this. God, will you forgive me? He says, yes, I love you, I forgive you. And so if forgiveness is this water, it gets poured into our lives by, by God, by the power of his Holy Spirit. He forgives us because of what he did on the cross and we hold it. And we go, thank you for that forgiveness. But what we learn here in this prayer is forgiveness is really not a cup, it's a funnel. You can't hold it. I know. <laughs> As you are forgiven, you what? I know, y'all, I've got you awake now, right? You forgive. <laughs> if you come to the front to pray, those are the, some wet spots there, okay? <laughs> Forgiveness is a funnel. It's not a cup. I think for so much of my life, I've viewed forgiveness as a cup, and I hold it. And I say, thank you, God, for forgiving me. Thank you that I did that a thousand and one times, 10,000 and one times, a hundred thousand and one times, whatever my sin or struggle is, and you forgave me again. Now, I know it's hard to believe sometimes that he does, but we receive it and we go, thank you. And then he says, as we forgive others. Well, see, I can't hold it. I can't hold it. I've got to what? Let it flow through me. See, forgiveness, y'all didn't get any over here. There's a funnel, right? I just do these things as you'll remember them, all right? Y'all got it? I won't get it on the camera. Ooh. Forgiveness is what? A funnel. Have you been viewing it that way? Or in your life, has forgiveness been more like a cup? that you hold on to God's love, you hold on to God's forgiveness for you, or is it a funnel? It's interesting. The word forgive in the Greek here, when Jesus says that we pray to God that we would be forgiven as we forgive others, the word in the Greek, the original word, I, I wrote this down, is so important. It means to release, to let go of. This is not release. This is holding on to. This is release. This is letting go of, to let it be sent away. This is why in the scriptures it says uh, in the Old Testament that as far as the east is from the west, has God cast your sins away from himself. Now, we sometimes teach that, and we say, God has forgotten your sins. 
Do you forget people's sins? No. We remember them. God remembers that we sin. It's more loving that he remembers, yet he chooses to forgive, than he just wipes his own memory away. Does that make sense? And so it's actually a God who loves me so much, who knows that I continue to offend him, but loves me anyway, and does not hold that against me. That's an amazing God. And he says, if you want to live like Jesus, which we say we do, we call ourselves Jesus followers, right? At least at Quest, we love that language, Jesus follower. Christian is great. Um, that just means imitator of Christ, by the way. So are you an imitator of Christ? It actually it was a derogatory term at first, and it meant little Christ. Look at all these little Christs. You've got Jesus Christ, and you've got all these little Jesus people running around. That's us, right? And so we're supposed to be exhibiting the very heart of God in the way that we live. Well, if I hold on to forgiveness, and I don't let it go, I don't release it after it's been given to me, then I'm not being very Christ-like. This is the way of Jesus. So I wrote this down. God's forgiveness is to be received, then released. You receive it, and you release it. It's like breathing. <laughs> receive, release. I think God put into us this whole breathing thing. He could have just done it one way. I guess it wouldn't work. Like, you breathe in, that's it. But there's so much in breathing that is the nature of God. You, you receive it, and then you release it. It's like coming to church. You, you receive, I hope, and then you go out, in, out, right? This is what it means to be a Christian and to live in the way of Jesus is to not only receive God's forgiveness and hold on to it, but like a funnel, receive it and release it. Receive it and release it. God's forgiveness is to be done that way. Is this difficult? Heck to the yes, right? Yes. This is so hard to do. Series on forgiveness, honestly, I was like, I don't know. Do I want people to not show up in, in February? But I've also discovered that when we talk about this, it, it is empowering and moving for people and releases and frees them to be who God's called them to be, and it releases and frees other people who you've been holding some things against to do that. We've got to learn how to forgive as we've been forgiven if we really want to live in the way of Jesus. It's a Christ-like posture to do this. This is not a Christ-like posture to simply receive forgiveness. It's a start, but the Christ-like posture is to become the funnel for Christ which is to receive it and then release it. This is really profound. I was talking to my wife about this yesterday or Friday as I was finishing up this message and I got to this part and I was like, you know what's crazy? And this is kind of one of those aha moments that's really, after you think about it, you go, why is that an aha moment? But it just is. Think about this. Forgiveness isn't for people who aren't offending you. Who's it for? It's for the person who's offended you and sinned against you, right? You don't forgive somebody who doesn't offend you. You don't walk around, I forgive, you'd be too holy and spirit, oh, I forgive you. I for what I do, nothing, but I forgive you for an event, you know. <laughs> Forgiveness is for the one who has offended you. That's why it's hard, right? Because you don't go around for, it's easy to love people who love you and don't hurt you. But when you get really into relationships, like, by the way, marriage, family, friendships, coworkers, whatever, the person that has hurt you and offended you, and I know it can be deep. I'm not making light of it. That's why it's so hard. Forgiveness is when you go, you have offended me. There's an offense against me. It's legitimate even. Whatever it, when I say legitimate, I mean they actually did offend you, okay? They offended you with something. They sinned against you. They hurt you. This happens all the time in marriages and families and friendships. And what breaks it apart? 
Usually when one of us says, and I'm not willing to forgive you. And so what happens here is we learn that forgiveness is offered to the one who has hurt us, who has an offense against us, because they're the one who, listen, needs forgiveness. And I, I really believe that sometimes somebody can't understand God's forgiveness until they hear it from you. There's just this thing about being human, right? Where, where if we want to understand who God is and understand true forgiveness, then we have to experience forgiveness from another person. This is not a message about, so that means you let people walk all over you. Whatever. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying there aren't boundaries and things like that. But I find nowhere in Scripture where Jesus says, okay, forgiveness, you don't have to do it. When the person has hurt you this many times or this has happened. It, 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 we're still, I'm, in fact, Peter one time comes to Jesus. He's teach, Jesus teaching on forgiveness. And he goes, hey, Jesus, how many times do I have to forgive somebody? Seventy times? Seven times? And Jesus goes, no, 70 times seven. Peter's like, gets out his iPhone. He's doing the, Jesus like, stop, stop, stop. Infinity. <laughs> like, you just keep doing it. I know that's so hard, right? We're like, why would I keep doing that if the person keeps? Because it's not you letting them in to hurt you. That's not what I'm saying. It's you releasing them to, uh, to, to be free, to be who God says they can be, and releasing yourself. Have you ever noticed that unforgiveness becomes bitterness and you start to hate a person and all this kind of stuff? I mean, it's so difficult. Now listen, it would be one thing if Jesus only taught this, but he didn't just teach it. I love this about Jesus. He also modeled it. So Jesus teaches forgiveness and then Jesus models forgiveness. This is always Jesus. Whenever Jesus says you could do some, should do something, he's not a hypocrite and doesn't do it himself. Jesus always models what he teaches. That's why I think in leadership, I always say, hey, don't ask people to give financially if you're not willing to give financially or serve uh, exhaustively if you're not willing to serve exhaustively or whatever. You've got to be willing to do what you ask others to do. Jesus is that leader, <laughs> the ultimate expression of that. And so Jesus models forgiveness. How does he do that? Ultimately, he does it on the cross. And Jesus says something unbelievable on the cross. Creation is crucifying the creator. Sinners are crucifying the sinless one. Think about that. And Jesus, in that moment, looks out at the people who are offending him, who are hurting him, who are crucifying him. He's allowing it to happen, but they're doing this to him. And he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. I've often struggled with that scripture. I don't know if you've heard it before. I'm like, what do you mean they don't know what they're doing? Have you ever sinned and known you were sinning? I did. I have. Sometimes I don't. But a lot of times I'm just like, I know I'm about to sin. Ah, God will forgive me. <laughs> right? So in this moment, Jesus is saying something profound and deep, which is, God, Father, you're going to pour out your forgiveness but I'm not gonna hold it. I need you to forgive them. I'm dying on the cross. And I realized this week that the cross is like a funnel through which God pours forgiveness. And Jesus could have, Jesus could have, when God poured out that forgiveness, Jesus could have said, you people. <laughs> Isn't that how we start when we love somebody? You people. No, but what does Jesus do? He says, I release forgiveness. He became a funnel. The cross is God in the flesh, Jesus, being a funnel of forgiveness for us. And don't miss this. You've offended God. You've sinned against God. It's our sin, we often say, that put him there. But on the cross, when he could have just held forgiveness, what did he do? He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He let it go. He allowed it to flow freely. And here's what's crazy. Jesus was in a vulnerable position, friends. What do I mean by that? He was naked. In fact, 
it says right after this verse that they were casting lots to try to decide who got his clothes that they had stripped him of. And this was a vulnerable moment. He was bleeding and dying naked basically in front of the entire world. And whether you would ever receive his forgiveness or not, he gives it to you. <laughs> he offers it. He doesn't go, well, I know how you're going to react. I know how you're going to, in his divine foreknowledge and all. No, he gives it to you. He offers it. And all you have to do is receive it and be forgiven. As we intro this series, as we begin this series today, really I wanted to say two things. And they're both kind of encapsulated in, in this bottom line I want to give you today. And it's this, forgiven people will forgive people. See, there's two parts to that. Have I been forgiven by God? And do I realize then that turns me into a funnel <laughs> of grace and love and forgiveness for others? Because forgiven people, they forgive people. And so if, if you don't forgive people or you're not willing to forgive, you have to ask yourself, do I really understand God's forgiveness for me? Do I really understand? I find it amazing today. And maybe it's not just today. I think they talked about this in the New Testament constantly. That we, we say we follow Jesus and we want to be Christians and we want to be the church and all this, but we don't walk in the way of Jesus on this issue. But we, we have to. There's a world that needs to know they're forgiven by God. So often the way they're gonna know that is when we forgive. It points to Jesus. It makes people go, how in the world do you do that? Where does that come from? Because I've offended you. And then they, you, it comes from God. <laughs> I'm forgiven and so I forgive. I have found, listen to this, people have come to me and confessed things and said things to me and, and Sometimes they've said to me, I expected that you wouldn't offer grace. And I'm like, I got no choice. I'm forgiven. I can't hold that against you, even if it's against me. I have to forgive. Why? Because Christ has forgiven me, and he put that same heart in me. So forgiven people forgive people. Listen, um, I want to ask you, I started with two questions. I'm going to end with a couple of questions. Um, first of all, have you been forgiven? No, really. Do you know God's forgiveness? There are some people here today that need to know God has forgiven them. You haven't forgiven yourself. Maybe someone else hasn't forgiven you, but God has. I'm here to tell you whether they ever forgive you or not, God has forgiven you. For anything, for everything, absolutely. Else, how did Jesus, what you're saying when you say God can't forgive me or doesn't forgive me is you're standing at the foot of the cross. I want you to imagine this. You're pointing at Jesus and saying that's not enough. What you've done here is not enough for my sin. It won't cover my sin. The sins of the entire world, yes, but not mine. God has forgiven you in Jesus. And don't dare tell another person that God doesn't forgive them. Amen? I mean, you may not, but God does. <laughs> God does forgive us for our sins. God can save anybody. Amen? Amen? Any sin that's been committed, God forgives in Jesus Christ. That's the power of Jesus. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And the world needs to know that. And the church ought to be the place where the message is proclaimed most. Amen? You're forgiven, friends receive it but then there's this who you need to release it to has there been a name a face a person are they sitting next to you <laughs> is it somebody at work is it a i don't know who has offended you that you need to forgive some of you might say well they're not even here with us anymore like they've passed from this world you can still forgive them who do you need to release? Who do you need to be a funnel of God's grace and forgiveness to?